and welcome to this video. No, I am not in Norway. The car has still not received its engine, but onto what the content is about. The content of this video is lures, right? And more particularly than that, lead and stainless steel lures. And I will get into the reasons why I'm gonna fish two different types this year. Designing your own tackle can improve your chances of catching fish vastly because you can uh, tailor them to the situations that you need no matter where you are in this world right you're fishing in norway or cornwall or maine it doesn't matter if you're producing your own lures you can produce them to get the attentions of the fish in your area sure it's easier to go to a tackle shop and just pick it up but when you just start designing your own lures you start to notice nuances this is what led me to this point here this video right now in norway White light is at a premium. The strongest light there are the more active types of light, such as UV. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, watch this video, I'll link it in the description, okay? So this is what it's all about. UV light and the lack of white light, right? But I like to make use of both. For instance, if I am fishing deep water in the middle of the day, the lure will hit the water obviously at the top and it will sink all the way to the bottom if I let it. If I'm fishing into 40 meters of water, if it is 12 o'clock midday, that white light won't penetrate much deeper than 15 to 20 meters. And so now you're left with potentially a silver jig that the only way the fish can find it is by its lateral line. Fish do hunt that way, but it's more hit and miss than if you add some visuals to help the fish find the jig as well. So that's where the UV comes in on the bottom. And I call this jig the Silver Hornet. Yes. Now this is a slow jig. It's got a big fat belly and a flat back. None of that, right? So the top half of this jig is reflective and the bottom half of it has got UV pigment on it. And it has an action like this. And as it sinks through the water column, the top portion of the jig reflects white light and the bottom portion of the jig glows due to UV light. And that is the whole deal with this type of allure, okay? For the sunny days, right? It's one of the joys of being able to produce your own jigs is the fact that you can tailor them whatever way you like. So I've made these more realistic looking lures, right? This is also a slow jig. And the fact that it flutters like the other one is inconsequential right now. It's gonna be the same either side because the light is dull, right? It's still got some flash and it's still got some UV. Also, I imagine it might have a better silhouette because of the lack of the reflectivity of it. So this is my bet for low light conditions. On cloudy days or in the morning or in the evening, now we're gonna move on to the fast jigs, right? So this is one of many different styles I have. This is a diamond jig from the States. This is a recoat of an Asian jig, which was just shiny because it was for fishing around the equator where they have more white light. Now it has been adapted for low light conditions with some UV pigment. And I have these also in a dull version like that. To say it's a dull day, I can whip out one of those ones and fish it instead of this one here for the bright days, right? And apart from that, there is also the size of the bait that has influence on the fish as well. For instance, some of the bigger fish might not be as interested in smaller lures, okay? It's just a fact. Sometimes a whale would eat a 20 gram jig, but it's more often the case where they'll just turn their noses up at it. In the past, I had to ignore shallow water until I realized that I could fish steel jigs there instead with the same impact. So why am I using steel jigs instead of lead jigs? The simple as this, right? This is a 30 gram slow jig, right? And this is a 35 gram steel jig. The action of these two is the same, right? But a big old cod will be less interested in taking this guy than he would this guy. Also, it's much easier for him to see this guy because it's bigger than this. In Norway, when I fish with jigs like this, it's usually just for small gurnard and small haddock and bait fish, basically, a lot of the time. So you can fish these guys, they have a bigger presence and will attract the attention of the bigger fish in the shallows. This jig here is kind of like a slow jig in the fact that it flutters. And one of its benefits of fishing with a jig like this is it gets carried by a current extremely easily. And so what I do with these is I will flick them out into a current 
let them drift with the current until it finds an eddy and then it will drop out of the current into the eddy where a lot of times cod and pollock are lurking there in the still water for a bait fish to mess up and then they will be upon it. This is a tactic that I've used to great effect in uh, South Strymon near Boda and I call this the Boda blade right and I've caught some great fish there with this not this particular lure but variations of it in the past right. Also you can fish fast jigs in the same approximation. This one is 110 grams. This one here is 65 grams, right? The steel jig. If I threw this into 10 meters of water, it'd be in the mud before I could blink. This I can work in there. And it's not uncommon in Norway to have a 10, 15, maybe even 20 pound fish just hiding under some weed, it's just in the shallows there. It's quite amazing, but it does happen. When I say shallow, I mean six to 10 meters, 15 meters, something like that. And also it will fish a little bit deeper as well because this is about 65 grams. It's quite thick, right? This guy is not. But that's why I'm throwing this one into currents because it doesn't cast very far, but it does get carried by currents very well. This guy casts really far but it doesn't get carried by currents very well, but you can still fish it in the shallows because it will take 15, 20 seconds, sometimes for it to hit the bottom, depending on the depth of water. And it's quite an exciting way to fish. So that is what these steel jigs are for, right? I've got this Dexter's wedge. It will fish like a slow jig. So that's basically it. I hope this will benefit your lure fishing in Norway in the future. The next video I'm going to do is going to be about soft plastics. And this is going to encompass light tackle halibut fishing, which is something I haven't really tried before. I've been trying to get the gear to do it. I have the gear now. The next video is going to be about that. If you're interested in it, keep your eye out or hit the notification button. So that's it for me today. Hopefully I'll be on my way to Norway. We'll all be happy again. Yeah. So I'm Billy. This is Billy showing you lures wherever you are in the world. Remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.